So we've been looking at the biblical roundtables from season three, and there's been some really interesting things that have come up overall. And I want to look at this next one as well. This is episode five, and specifically we're going to be talking about Veronica in this one. Uh, Obviously an amazing character that's in The Chosen season three, and a huge part of episodes four and five where we kind of see her all over the place. Kind of a contrast to Eden in these episodes, and uh, it's really beautiful overall, really, really cool overall. Um, So let's check out what the experts, the biblical roundtable leaders (laughs) have to say uh, about this episode and uh, kind of what we can do dig into right here. Let's jump in. But then we get into uh, more of Veronica's story and we see that scene where uh, Nathaniel and Thaddeus come across her and you see even more a little bit of this, you know, okay, you can't touch her, uh, uh, st- keep your distance. But then there's something that um, that I found really interesting that I didn't know until I was doing the show and we were researching, which is the whole touching of the garment, the touching of the fringe of the garment. Um, I'm going to ask you about this, but what we found was that, see, when you see it in Scripture, uh, I thought that maybe she just touched his garment because that's all she could reach, mm-hmm. but that there actually was something to that, that that they believed that, um, and that some believed it was even a superstition, but that they believed that the hem of a garment or the, the prayer tassels had some sort of power from a rabbi. What's the story there? Uh, you could do Yeah, so there's a lot of... Yeah, so we talked about this a ton when we went through all of our episodes and talking about episode five in particular. Uh, the hem of the garment would be the tzitzit, right? Which is what Rabbi is about to talk to us about. Um, but really, really interesting stuff there. When we think about the verse, it's like there's healing in his wings and different things like that. All of it correlates, right, to the tzitzit and the, being the prayer shawl, being the thing that would, would always be with him. Like there is a... Um, a lot of correlation to this when we talk about Jesus in, in this whole segment here, um, that she was able to touch the hem of his garment. And I think this was a great conversation during season three, absolutely. A lot of significant things there. I mean, number one, people just think she touched the bottom of his garment. No, she touched what's known as the seat seat, right. which is the ritual fringes that were commanded in the book of Numbers to be placed on every four-cornered garment needed right. to uh, have them. And they were one meant to be a reminder of the 613 commandments, which are mentioned in one of the episodes. But what's also interesting is one of the reasons that they were given is because the children of Israel saw the giants in the land and they strayed after their own eyes. And these were meant to say, look, every time you look on them, you're never to have fear or lose faith, but you're to trust the Lord and to follow him and be faithful to his commandments. So it's meant to, in a sense, be the original WWJD, yeah, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a really funny way to put it. The first, what would Jesus do, is to look at the prayer tassels and to remember what God has done for you. It's like a constant reminder of having him there with you. And remember, that these tassels that they wear are not just like random tassels that you can find anywhere. They're very specific, right? So um, they're very specific to... Um, like what they have on them, how they're made, how many wraps are in them, how many knots are in them. Like it's all very, very specific there. But before that, <laughs> the, the language in the Hebrew for the CC is the same as the language of the spies, not to stray after, not to spy or stray after your own heart. There's all these linguistic par- parallels, but, but probably what's most significant about her grabbing the fringes, the seat seat of his garment, is that it's actually a fulfillment of a messianic prophecy. Because it says, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. Mm -hmm. And the word for wings is the Hebrew word kanfe or kanaf, which is the same word to denote the four corners of the garment. The four-cornered garment that you wear with the seat seat is known as the arba kanfot. It's the same word. So... The, the, the corners of the garment, which the fringes are, are connected to the Messiah, who is the son of righteousness, who's going to rise up with healing in his wings. So when she touches the hem of his garment, obviously she finds a fulfillment of that verse in his life because she finds the healing mm-hmm. that's in him, and she's transformed. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, and I also think the other thing that's beautiful is that where it says something about Jesus, because anytime an unclean person touches a clean person, they're made unclean. Right. But- yeah, this is a really great parallel. I love this that he points us out here. 
but in a sense, the opposite occurs. Sure. Right? Yeah. He, you can't make him unclean. In fact, <laughs> who, when you touch him, everything who he is supersedes everything who you are, and it changes your status. Yeah. You don't change his. Yeah. Right? Con- contamination reverses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's awesome. That's a yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. And there's that, there's that moment that. Uh, I'll be honest, I wasn't thinking of what you just said when I wrote this, but when you said saying, well, man, teacher, we can take her somewhere else. He's, she's clean. Right. It's over. Yeah, right. Um, and it's, it's a very powerful moment because it and it's obviously doesn't refer just to her physical state, but to her, her spiritual state. Um, so, but, but when she says, uh, at some point, if I just touch the firm of his garment, uh, and, and, and Nathaniel says, well, that's a superstition. She says, maybe for others, but for, for him, I'm talking about him, that is something that they would have... Uh, that, that would yeah, be the thing back yeah. then. Yeah, the idea. And she too, like we, we've done a bunch of videos on this. I think Brandon Robbins did a great video on this as well. But when we talk about, um, uh, when we talk about Jesus in this context and the superstitions that are going on and the, the Jewishness of the area, like, so Veronica in particular says that she's from Caesarea Philippi. This isn't just like a, some random Roman city. This is like a very pagan, very evil, very um, idolatrous city. And so this place would have been very used to having children sacrifice, very used to having like sex slaves and prostitutes, very used to having um, some really unturred stuff with animals, stuff like that. Um, It would be very, very disgusting. But prevalent in that society would have been superstitions. It would have been um, a lot of different things like that. And so since she's from Caesarea Philippi, like she was probably looking through all these different oracles, all these different things. And on top of that, like the necklace that she's wearing, we think is actually an amulet that she is trying to superstitiously use to help her solve her issue. So she's seen all these different shamans and oracles and different people to try to fix her issue, but none of them were able to fix her issue. And so when she looks at this situation, she's saying, no, this situation in particular is not the same as what I've been going through before. It is different. This, while it may be a superstition to some, this is not a superstition to me because I know who he is. I believe in him, not the superstition. And so she's really trying to turn that corner and make it something that is, that is way more um, uh, solid than just some random superstition. It is Jesus, that he is the Christ, that she believes in him, not necessarily you know, all these other things that are kind of going on. So really, really cool. If you're liking this video and you want to see more from us, it would really help us out if you would subscribe to our channel. YouTube really takes into account how much people like and subscribe and look at different videos. So it would really help us if you were to give some of those signals to YouTube so that they know our channel's good and it deserves to grow. Anyway, let's get back to the video. If he's like getting in this ancient tradition of these charismatic holy men, right, right who, emanate such holiness and such a presence of God that if you can uh, somehow connect with them, like there's even today, a lot of Jewish people go and pray at the graves of famous rabbis for miracles because Mm -hmm. of belief that, you know, there's something unique about them that'll grant them favor uh, in God's sight. But I think the thing about this is that for her as a woman, number one, to touch him, even the hem of his garment. For her as an unclean woman oh, yeah, yeah. to touch mm-hmm. the rabbi's hem of the garment, this has been something that would have been, you know, potentially uh, could have ended very poorly for yeah, her. very scandalous. <laughs> That's what's so rich about that story in scripture is just, and again, you don't, you don't know all of that necessarily when you read the gospels alone. Yes. You, the context is what matters here and the, the weight of that and what, what it actually meant for someone like that to break through the crowd and reach for his garment, what that reflected. Um, I'm always a little bit curious in the, in, in the Catholic Church, uh, this, this woman, what's, what's her, how, what, what is her status? In so Catholics hold Veronica in a different light than, than a lot of other people. Now, we don't actually know if her name was Veronica or if this, or if this woman, is, woman is the same person um, as someone that the Catholics attribute to later on. So the Catholics would say that Veronica shows up during, um, during the, the crucifixion of Christ while he's carrying his cross to Golgotha, um, that she comes up and wipes his face with a cloth, uh, and that this becomes the veil of Veronica, which is like a Catholic icon, right? And they say that this woman with the issue of blood is the same person because they're linked in, in some way. I don't necessarily buy that. I don't necessarily believe that. Um, I don't see the biblical evidence for that. Um, 
it, it, while it could be, it, it's the same as saying anything else could be in the Bible, right? Like it, it's very limited in its factual identity. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't know 100. percent We don't even know this woman's name uh, within the passage of Jairus and the bleeding woman. So yeah, not 100 percent sure. And how is she looked at? Is it? I imagine just as she's a woman. referred to as a saint, yeah. so she's recognized as as a canonical saint, mm -hmm. and and probably more for uh, her where she uh, encountered Jesus on the Via Dolorosa than right. on yeah. than, than in this incident. But it's a great connection to make between the two parts of her life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, her name means true image, uh, mm. which uh, applies to that mm -hmm. Via, Via Della Rosa scene. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, 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 the, in the scriptures, uh, Jesus calls her daughter, which is the only time in scriptures where he refers to someone as daughter. And we thought that was interesting. And so our, our portrayal, working our way backwards, was well, what if it was because she was outcast and and didn't, you know, that, that the word daughter would have meant even more. Is there any other potential interpretations of that, why he referred to her as daughter? Uh, there's obviously a connection into the story of Jairus. I mean, these miracles back to back. Mm -hmm. In scripture, you mentioned that... Uh, the, All three gospels that have these two stories, weave them together like this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the two daughters, um, the one literal daughter, and then this uh, Jesus calling Veronica a daughter. I think that is... Um, uh, a, a wonderful, plausible portrayal that you have, mm -hmm. that she has been outcast from all connections. She doesn't feel family relationships with anybody yeah. and hasn't for a long time. And for her to be physically healed, but then also socially, familially healed by being renamed a daughter again. Yeah. Yeah. That's very moving. Yeah, I mean, I think if we're going to tie different parts of this episode together, some an interesting connection could be, you know, Israel is often called Batzion, daughter of Zion. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so in a sense, she represents God's people as a whole. Mm -hmm. And what's in, an interesting connection with that is is the whole, you know, issue with the cistern yeah. and one of the interesting things about them working together Peter and Gaius on the cistern is that there's actually a significant messianic prophecy in Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah 12 is they'll look upon the one whom they have pierced and one mourn for him as one mourns for an only begotten son. Zechariah 13 says a, a fountain the same word used in the Zer mm -hmm. uh, Zechariah passage, a makor, a fountain will be opened for the tribe of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to purify of uncleanness and sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is this idea of, you know, her potentially representing in that context of all these things, her representing Israel. He's the source of the living water. Mm -hmm. She comes in contact with him. Zechariah 13 is fulfilled she's cleansed, right? Yeah, I mean, that that I will uh, say that we were doing intentionally is the, the reason the episodes are called Unclean Part 1, Unclean Part 2 mm -hmm. is uh, just the, the, there's so much richness to these stories that goes beyond just physical healing yeah. um, and the restoration of uh, of God's relationship with his people. And, and, and one of the things I, I, I we like to do was to have Gaius having maybe even a little bit of wisdom that Simon is missing out on when Gaius says to him, like, uh, so, it sounds like you guys aren't trusting your source of living water right now. Maybe you're you're the broken cisterns, you know. Right. Yeah, that was a great portion of season three. I really loved the relationship between Gaius and Simon. I wonder how that will evolve over time and how that will look in season four. Um, yeah, I don't know. And uh, and I thought <clears throat> that's that was an idea of, of sometimes I think we have a monopoly on understanding and, 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 mm -hmm. and sometimes even... Uh, outsiders can can grasp something that we're missing because we're too close to it. Right. And again, part of what you call the long game with Gaius. We're yeah. seeing him slowly yeah. but surely start to grasp some of these concepts to slowly but surely maybe rid himself of the gods that he's currently worshiping yep. uh, and, and to focus on the true God who's arrived. So uh, anything else that stood out about the, the Veronica storyline as we lead into the Jairus storyline? I thought that this episode, you you know, it's a delicate subject matter, um, a woman's menstrual period. Um, <laughs> but I think it's worth yeah. mentioning that, yeah, the body. Yeah, I always wondered how people were going to respond to all of that, knowing that 
this story was kind of coming, how three male writers were going to write around this whole situation. I thought they did a great job, though. I thought they did really, really well <clears throat> kind of going through her situation, talking back before what they were talking about with her relationships with her family, knowing that she's like fully alone in this world and how Jesus addressed her as a daughter. It is a very powerful moment for sure. Like this woman would have been destroyed, like renewed, yes, but just destroyed in her life. Like having to go through all the things that she went through would be crazy. Bible talks about these things. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I congratulate you for uh, jumping in on, on a difficult topic and doing it so well. Yeah, and I think just even the fact that it talks about it, I think a lot of people look at like, they can look at the all of the various commandments that seem very detailed in the Torah and be like, oh, that's just legalistic or, mm -hmm. you know, boring. But really what it's meant to convey is that God is concerned about every area of our life. Mm -hmm. And he's concerned about and in being invite, invited into every area of our life and for his mm -hmm. presence and holiness to permeate every aspect of our life, even the things that we consider mundane are meant to be spiritual and can be sanctified for him. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. And I, I, I love the way that for a lot of people, Veronica was an objective person that was unclean and they objectified yeah. her in that way. But Jesus really sees her as a suffering human being. And I think mm. claims relationship with her. That's why I love that he, he addresses her as daughter. So he's, he's not, he doesn't just see her as a problem or something to be avoided, um, but a real flesh and blood human being who's suffered and now is healed. Yeah. So it's I think that's great because I think Yeshua treats people differently because he sees them differently. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he sees good. them differently than the way everyone else sees them, not for where they're at, but for who God created them and called them to be. Yeah. And hopefully they see themselves through his eyes. Isn't this one of the times where he says, look up? Yes, like yeah, our, this mug, is the, our mugs that you have yeah, in front of us. The reason on these mugs that we have uh, facing. <laughs> Quick Dallas promotion time. <laughs> you know, it's, instead of, because we're not trying to just be promotional, although if you do take a sip, you will see. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> it says the chosen on the bottom of the mug. That said, uh, we, we want when people, you know, drink each day, you know, to, to, to be reminded of that. And that's, this is the second time Jesus says this. The first time was in episode, uh, season two when he's talking to Mary Magdalene, who's mm -hmm. feeling um, shame over her, her relapse. And Jesus is saying, look up. And, and we thought the same thing applied to Veronica here because she also would have felt shame, uh, not necessarily after her healing, but just would have felt, she, her, she lived a life of deference, constantly, yeah. You know, avoiding contact, not look, being, mm -hmm. not looking up, and here she is, surrounded by people, all staring at her, and Jesus is giving her identity. He's giving her mm -hmm. value that she hasn't had. Well, he's giving her her true identity, right? Like Jesus doesn't just like make up an identity for us. He gives us our true identity of who we are, who he created us to be. And so, when I say to myself that I am dumb or stupid or or ignorant, like like Jesus replies to me and says, "No, like I made you to be good, right?" Um, and, and through me, you can be holy through me. You can be good. Um, but only through him. Right. And so he makes us back into the people that he meant for us to be in the first place. Um, we talked about this a lot on our podcast this week. If you, if you want to check that out, better, not easy. You can go check that out on YouTube. One of our favorite things to do during the week. We talk about this a lot. Um, but this is one of the things that we talked about in that podcast this week was our identity and who we are and how God makes us the people that we are. Um, just really, really cool in a long time. Mm -hmm. And so the concept of looking up for her would have been a big deal. Well, Huge. yeah, which is, it's interesting because it's, it's tied to the redemption of the children of Israel out of Egypt. Because it says that when they left Egypt, it says they left, God says when they left Egypt, they left with their heads held high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they had been slaves for so mm -hmm. long yeah, yeah, in a right. state of looking down, don't look mm -hmm. into the eyes of your master, Part of the sign of being redemptive, if redemption in the scriptures is you're you're straight, you're erect, you're looking up, which is exactly what we see in this case, right? Absolutely, yeah. wonderful. So yeah, very cool. Obviously, I love these biblical roundtables. Love being able to hang out with these guys, just chat through what's kind of going on in these episodes. Veronica's a really cool one. We'll definitely see her again in in most likely season six when the crucifixion happens. That's going to be intense really, really hard. Uh, but I, I bet we'll see her again there. 
And, uh, and that's going to be really, really interesting to kind of dive into. But uh, thank you so much for checking out this small part of our live stream. You can check out the entire live stream and full podcasts over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the snipe life. This is by far the best way to help us in our ministry. So thank you so much to those that are on our Patreon already. And we'll see the rest of you over there. Hopefully we'd love to hit 300 patrons this year. So you could really, really help us out. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.